Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at Voxengo Span. It's a super helpful spectrum analyzer plugin that you can use for referencing other tracks. This can be super handy as a rule of thumb technique to kind of check that your frequency spectrum is similar to a track that you know sounds really good. This can tell you things like whether your kick or bass is too loud or too quiet, your hats are too loud, too quiet, whether some of your synths or vocal elements are too loud or too quiet. A bunch of stuff really but we're getting a general overview of the frequency spectrum of our track compared to a track that we know has a really good balance. If you want to grab the project files from this you can do so there's a link in the description it goes to Patreon which is one of the best ways that you can support the channel and make sure I bring you these videos consistently. If you like the track that's playing it's one of mine it's out on 8-bit and it's the track we're going to be using as a reference in the project. So let's jump into Ableton and see how this is done. Okay guys, so here we are inside Ableton and I've put together a little demo track and found a reference track. The track I'm going to use for referencing is my track The Station from 8-Bit Records. Just sidebar, this is one of my favorite tracks that I've ever produced. I've played this so many times and I just, it's such a fun track to play. And I'm pretty happy with like all of the production, mixing, mastering and all that kind of thing. So it's a good reference track because I want my other tracks to ideally sound like this. So that's kind of step one, is find yourself a good reference track, something that you feel is well balanced, well mixed and mastered, has good kind of separation with the elements and that kind of thing, and is close to what you're trying to do. So this is just a wee refresher. You heard it in the intro and stuff as well, but. that's what we're working with. I've just found a, I've just looped a section here that has a similar number of elements and similar elements to what we're working with. The track has vocals and a few more synths and stuff, but for this demonstration, I've kind of tried to mirror the number of elements on here. Okay, so this is what we're working with in terms of the track. Right. So it sounds okay. It doesn't sound like in a million miles away from the reference, but not really full. But anyway, I've purposefully made some kind of mistakes on there, if you like, so that we can fix them. Now, I've done a previous video with Voxingo Span, but it was inside of like another video about referencing in general. So what we're going to do is grab a span. We're going to chuck it on here. Now we'll close it. First thing we want to do is match the loudness of our loop and of our reference track. So I've got a free loudness meter, Yulian loudness meter 2. So integrated loudness is minus 8.1 lufts. So we're going to try and match that with our limiter for our track that we're working on. Right, so we need a little bit more limiting. So I'm going to bring that down by about half a dB. All right, close enough. They're going to be in the same ballpark. Okay, I've got a copy of Voxingo Span here, and we need a sidechain input. You'll notice this doesn't have a sidechain input. So we need to use the VST2 version because it has this sidechain input. But I'm going to show you a solution to get around this if you're on a Mac with like an M2, M3, whatever, M1 chip. I'm on PC. But um, I'm pretty sure you can't use like VST2 on those. But this is how we would do it normally. We grab our reference track here and the sidechain input, change that to pre-FX so that nothing that's on that channel is affecting the input. It's just playing directly the audio. Now we're going to set up span and this is the same basically for the second solution. So we're going to go here to routing and we're going to select input three and input four. And then on the group assignments, we've got master and ref. So we can go to group names here and I've basically just called group one master. I can call this anything I want. So it comes here. Now we can see here, oh, let me just turn this off. This is, I've got a set as my like default preset. So, cause I use, this is basically the only way I use span but what we select here is which input we want. So we can see the reference track here. 
and we can see our main output. Now we're going to go to the settings and what we want to make sure is that the type is set to average, that the block size is set to 8 one nine two so what the block size determines is basically like how many bands or how high a resolution the spectrum analyzer is so the lower is like less resolution but much more cpu intensive and higher is like so it's 64 bands versus 65,000 bands and 8192 seems to be a good kind of average so we want to then go to smoothing i'll turn off the smoothing and show you what it's like So that's kind of too much information. It's distracting us with details. So we're just trying to see a general overview of the frequency spectrum. So one third octave smoothing. To reset this at any time, you just click. Good stuff. Now we want to make sure that the second spectrum here has the same settings applied. Set that to average and block size. Smoothing is one third octave. All good. Now in our underlay, we select, we can't select main because it's already selected here, but we select reference. Okay. So now we're seeing a spectrum analysis, an average spectrum analysis of the reference track in red and our track in blue. So what can we determine from that? We can determine that the kick is perhaps a little quiet, the bass is perhaps a little loud, and the hats are perhaps a little quiet. Maybe we've got a little bit too much going on in the mid-range. So let's try and work on some of those. Bass and the kick, right? So I always set my kick based on the input here, and I want it to be around minus 4 dB. So we're there close enough. Now my bass, as a general rule, I want that to be kind of 5 or 6 dB less than my kick. So I'm going to do this, solo the bass here, and check that. So we are louder. Okay, so we want that to be, yeah, it's way too loud, right? So I've just brought that down by like 7 dB. Right, it's still a bit loud. Let's try 1 dB down. This looks about right, somewhere in there. So it's a good ballpark to start with. Now we can even just go directly back to our spectrum analyzer. So that has already kind of smoothed out the low end a bit, but we might have lost a bit of loudness. So that bass was pushing up the loudness a lot, right? So we need to readjust. So I'm going to bring this down by about 2 dB again. So we always want to be loudness matching with our reference track. So it's pushing us much closer. I can hear that the bass is still a little bit too loud and it's showing in there. So let's bring that down, maybe 2 dB. Okay, and our hats, we want them to be a little bit brighter, right? So we can just turn up this whole group, try 3 dB increase. Maybe that's too much, maybe down one. Okay, and we've got this energy here. So that to me is possibly going to be the clap or possibly going to be that, but probably not that because that's very quiet. That clap was very loud. Let's give it a listen now. Okay, let's just pump this up a little.
Okay, so there's something happening here. Now it could just be that we've got different elements, but let's check against our reference track. All right, so I think we want to bring the shaker down a little bit. So that's really sounding and visually looking much closer to our reference. Let's check the loudness again. Okay, so we need to remember to keep readjusting this. So we will need a little bit more volume in general on the hats. Maybe a little bit less clap, a little bit more of this, and the string sounds quite loud. Okay, one final check. And we can see visually and hear that this is sounding a lot more balanced and a lot more similar in terms of the mix and the energy to the reference track. Maybe a little bit much clap still, maybe 2 dB down. Sounds good to me. Now, problem that I identified before is this only works in VST2, right? But there is a little hack with Span Plus. So you can download this in demo mode. We're going to chuck that onto our master and we're going to put it onto the reference track. So on the reference track, we click here and we go export to one. So each instance of this is linked. Now we're going to change this to red. We're going to go to the settings and go average. Smoothing one third octave. Block size 8192. Second spectrum average and that should be all we need to do in here. So that's going to collect the information from the reference track here. We go to master and we've got span plus here. Let's change this to blue and settings. We want to go average block size 8192 smoothing one third octave second spectrum average and we go import import from reference track. Okay. So you can see that looks a little bit weird. It's not coming in properly. What we need to do is go back to the reference track and click in here to reset it. So there we go. That's how you can use Span Plus. Now what's going to happen is it's going to like dim the volume every 45 seconds or something. But really it doesn't matter too much when you're doing this. It's not, I haven't found it to be too annoying at all, which I gave it a go and thought it was worth mentioning, worth recommending for anyone who's on Mac or doesn't use VST2 plugins. So there you go. That's referencing with Span, how to set it up and a little hack with Span Plus. Hope you enjoyed that. And if you like the track that you can hear here, this project file will be available to download from Patreon. Patreon is one of the best ways that you can support the channel and make sure I keep bringing you these videos. So jump over there and have a look. We've got so many project files there in all sorts of different styles. There's something for everyone, quite literally. All right, guys, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Span for me is an invaluable tool for referencing and something that I use constantly. It's in my template. If you want to see a video walking through my template, then check it out here. If you have any must-have tools for referencing, let us know in the comments what they are. And if you're looking for something to watch next, then 
check out this. I think you're going to like it. That's it for me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.